here we go, kids. We're back. <laughs> it's another fun at one with me, Allison Lee, your host at CraftCast.com with my special guest today, Robert Danzig, who we love, love, love. He's going to inspire you like you're just not going to believe this. Uh, we'll do two things. Robert's going to do that. And then I'm going to do what I'm calling rogue soldering. You can't go wrong with this kind of soldering. But before we start, I just want to go over a little bit. Um, yes, we're throwing these things together fast and furious. So thank you so much for um, uh, everyone coming on and and uh, and supporting the artists, buying their tools, buying their classes. You know, we're trying to get so many classes up and going so it supports artists who lost, you know, teachers who lost their workshops teaching the summer. You know, another um, field of income, stream of income. Uh, we're, we have a coupon code going right now. Uh, so you get 30% off at craftcast.com, spring 2020, so you can buy classes, so you can keep entertain. So it's one of those things where it's a win-win for everyone, for people who want to learn, for the teachers making um, some extra income. You know, we just love it. So uh, and so let me just go over a few things. We have lots of videos to show today, lots of JPEGs. Uh, if you have any sort of, um, if your Wi-Fi isn't really strong, it might look animated more the video, but that's just, you know, how it goes. But here's what happens. When all is said and done, I take today's screencast recording, we save it, it goes up to craftcast.com and just look under the free uh, page, you'll see it right there, or just under um, videos. You can buy it for free. It'll say zero. You don't have to put any charge cards or anything. Uh, if you don't have an account, create one. Because why you do that is you get your own library at craftcast.com. So you just put it in your cart, purchase it for free. You get your library. It's all in there uh, with the handout. Uh, also with a smaller file size if you want to download it offline because some people um, can't uh, uh, watch everything streaming. They rather watch it download. Uh, so right now we'll do a little tech check. Anyone, Donna, you can't see the picture. Um, you look for a, this is good for everyone. Look for in your, uh, your bar where all of your little icons are. Look for a yellow circle with a white flower. Hit that and it'll bring the, uh, viewer that we are, which has our presentation into the front. Usually if you can't see the picture, it's because you have it hidden someplace or you have to click open that browser window. It's there, especially if you're already hearing the audio. Uh, a lot of times the audio will waver first. Now, even though your bars are not going down in Wi-Fi, if it slightly changes, the audio can waver. So if you can hear me now, but at some point your audio does drop out, uh, either hang on and probably come back in or log out and come back in. Uh, we notice that happens often. Uh, let me see, is that everything? Uh, but not to worry, we'll get it all up there. Uh, so you can see the recording all running at the normal speed. Uh, and again, I just want to thank all of you for coming in, supporting buying classes over at CraftCast. You know, it's just the best to stay, I think, when life is wacky. Um, I'm using that term today, but challenging, that we stay creative, all of us creative types, and occupied. And you know what? Even if you just buy a class and just watch it, but you don't make anything right now. I think that's still a little bit of heaven. I know every time I do one of these, I um, leave my studio and for like five minutes, I forget everything that's going on in the world. <laughs> I came out of here last week and I said to my husband, oh, let's go get hamburgers. And then I realized, oh, wait, we can't. So I think it really helps our mental being, which keeps us all healthy. So anyway, thank you all for your lovely, kind words, for coming on, all of the above. And with that... <laughs> We're going to have fun today. All right. I just want to say a little bit about Mr. Robert Danzig, who there he is, that cute little face and photo. Robert came on and did one of my first craft casts a billion years ago. He was willing to be all MacGyver with me and um, figure it all out. So he's done lots of classes uh, over at craft uh, Everyone always leaves like uh, spinning in circles with inspiration. So I'm warning you. If you have a seatbelt, you might want to tighten it because you're going to be like, oh, wait, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. So uh, Robert has taught me to enjoy walking through parking lots and looking down and picking up bits of shiny things and little pieces of broken glass and little pieces of broken 
uh, reflectors and seeing them for a gem and how to use them. So uh, it's the best. Uh, it's really fun. And then after Robert's, I'll show you some just fun soldering that you'll have a good time with. But now, Mr. Robert Danzig, take it away, babe. We love you telling us all the fun stuff that you are doing and sharing with us. Well, thank you so very much, Allison. You're always more than kind. So uh, just a couple of slides of, of work um, that uh, I will be explaining a little bit further as we go through the uh, uh, the videos here. I'm sorry, the craftcast today. This is a piece of concrete. It's set in concrete, but um, the reason I put this in is that void that you see in the middle there is made by having a piece of just raw polymer, raw being unbaked polymer clay in a mold before I pour the concrete in. You'll see this in subsequent uh, shots as we go through. Uh, that's why that's in here. And then it, the void, I actually put in some pearls and some gemstones that don't show up too well. Uh, this is actually going a different way. This is uh, making a bezel and you're gonna be seeing soldering with uh, Allison. So she's gonna show you how you could make do all of the silver work and stuff like that, and then fill it up with um, concrete. And then that's a bezel within a bezel. It's a druzy inside with concrete poured around it. And uh, the nice thing that stone at the bottom is an onyx uh, cab that I already set in a, uh, in a bezel, one of those serrated bezels, and I just plopped it in there. And you can set things into the concrete when it's wet and they stay forever. If you think about it, concrete is made you know, it's raison d'etre is to hold things together. So that's what it does. Robert, I need to say uh, something about concrete. When sure. I, when you first show this and we have in your, in your handout there, there's the links to buy the concrete. I first thought, oh, do I have to go buy like a 50 pound bag of concrete oh. at Lowe's? And you don't. Robert sells it in cute little containers. So and it's good. If I may pick up on that. Also, I was going to get to it later, but I'll do it now. The concrete that I'm showing here is actually a proprietary brand of concrete that I developed with a company in Pennsylvania who makes concrete for like bridges and skyscrapers. And um, I, I worked with them to come up with a concrete. This is unlike any concrete that you can buy in a store because this sets and cures, which means it dry, it kind of sets and meaning that it, it the chemical reaction takes place. Cure means it, it achieves its ultimate hardness in an hour. Yeah. So there's no waiting for this for two days or three days like normal concrete. It's a real uh, immediate gratification land. We love that. Uh, this is another. This is another piece um, that is made. This actually made. I cast this uh, concrete in a dapping block. Uh, oh. It's a very old dapping block that I just used for garbage stuff, and that's it. Actually, picked up the rust from this old rusty dapping block that I have, and that's that color that you see in the concrete there. And that's a piece of sterling silver that was set into a little void that had been made by again a piece of raw polymer clay. And I'll get it. You'll. This will become more apparent. Uh, as we go through the uh, the still shots. Love it. All right, we have a video next. Let me just check one um, check thing out there. Uh, sure. Who knows how to type in the box? Patrick or Mags? Uh, any audio issues for you? I'm just checking because I think... A yeah, your audio is... I'm sorry, may I interrupt? Yeah, go ahead. Your audio is a little dodgy sometimes. It is? Just Shoot. for me. Maybe it's mine. My thing, but uh, you've... Just a little bit. Well, if you're hearing it dodgy, it's at your end because I can hear you fine. So if you're not hearing oh, okay. me, it's, yeah, um, okay, yeah. a bit. Both are clear to ears. me. Okay, so it's it's sort of uh, most people are hearing fine. Um, some people they're having a little bit of dropout issues, and it came back via the phone. It could be that everyone is using um, this these days. Georgie said fine. All right, so um, you know. It's like how it goes and back on three we'll times now. Well, we will. We will go forward. Uh, lots of people have it fine. So, uh, okay. yeah. All right. We're going to go forward. We're going to do a video. What are you showing us here, Robert? I don't have it on my screen. Oh, um, I think this is the one where I'm going to actually be showing you about um, mixing the concrete. Um, also, this concrete that I have is so strong that you can actually cast in things that have an undercut. Like this mold has a complete oh, undercut. You'll wow. see the next one. The next one, that's actually a sphere. 
and you'll see it'll actually pop out and you think well it's going to break or something like that because i had to really force it to get out of there but it does it just pops right out this concrete is about seven or eight times stronger than anything you can buy in a uh in a store okay i love the undercut and part yeah it doesn't matter you can anything with an undercut or anything like that you're just fine i think i may have the wrong one here because i think this is the one where i'm showing about altering molds you're right you're right my mistake wait here my mistake because this is the one i just download here let's do it in order you sure because i can talk about this one uh no it's fine we got this oh, here go ahead okay. go for it babe okay so this is the one uh that was supposed to be next so this is really just showing about the concrete that's a little container of concrete that's the way i sell it and it actually has on the label here, which I think I hold up. Oh, I don't. Anyway, on the label, it actually has the instructions and the proportions for um, concrete to water. And also, if you're putting in pigment, which I show a little later, how much pigment. So this is this little spoon that I made is um, a little bit less than a tablespoon. And the proportions of pardon me, basically about a tablespoon of concrete and about a half a teaspoon of water thereabouts. You'll see that instead of using a tablespoon, I use a little pipette, mm -hmm. which I will send you with your concrete. Okay. It's just a little easier. So what I'm doing here is um, I'm, and if you get a pipette, you'll see that it's in metric, it's in liters or milliliters rather than, um, you know, a tablespoon. So I just put in a little concrete, uh, a water. I'm stirring up the concrete here. It's very slow on my screen. I don't know how it is on other people's screens. I think it's hard for everyone a little bit today because okay. I bet lots of people are on the internet. Yes. So. Yes. My wife is upstairs on mine. Yeah, there you go. So um, what I'm showing is to, um, I'm mixing it and I'm cutting it in much like you do shortening and see how there's still light gray at the side. I use these clear plastic cups because it's very important to be able to see the dry spots in the concrete and to incorporate those. If you have a dry spot and it gets into the mix uh, later on, that may be, it will dry, the concrete will dry around a, a, um, a dry spot and it will yield a, 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 a weaker um, casting. Got it. Okay. So I'm just putting it in drop by drop. And you get to a certain point where I just put in a few more drops and you'll see it starts to collect into a ball. It's exactly like if you've ever baked where you start adding just a little bit of liquid to flour mm -hmm. or butter. And all of a sudden, just that little bit more makes the whole thing kind of come into the dough ball. Mm -hmm. It's exactly mm -hmm. the same with the concrete. And I'm showing you how now just with a few drops, I can pass my uh, palette knife over it and I get a nice, smooth, even drag with that um, and it's just slightly moist on the top now what i'm doing next is i'm actually uh, that's fine the way it is however i'm adding just a couple of drops to elongate the setting time for myself so that i can do this a little slower in my demo and you can use the concrete when it's very stiff but to all moistened and you can use it that way for certain applications or you can make it a little bit thinner so you can almost just pour it Hmm. Oh, okay. I'm also getting a prompt about a network connection problem. Okay, so what I'm doing it here is that's just a, a, uh, a box. But what I'm showing is I can use that box, and you'll see a lot more of this in a moment. When I put the concrete in, I can make a box or a square, but I can also make a triangle out of, by using a box by just incorporating it in a corner. So you'll see what this yields later mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm, but really, mm -hmm. this video is about just mixing the concrete and how important it is to use that. Uh, see, I'm just going to make a triangle out of this square box. So when you buy one of these, uh, I don't sell them, but when you buy one of these molds, um, you uh, have a lot of, lot of possibilities. And that's what a lot of these still shots are about the possibilities with these silicone molds. But again, it's real. I can't overemphasize how important it is to um, use the uh, clear container to see what you're doing. So here again, I'm popping it out. I can spread that silicone. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm filling it up. I apologize. I'm filling this up again. And I'm just kind of popping it in there. The nice thing about the concrete too is it self levels. You'll see in a moment, I'm going to kind of tap this a little bit underneath, I believe. Yeah, I'm tapping it underneath. And it's kind of hard to see inside the mold. You'll see it again later in others. 
that it will self-level completely. So you'll always have whatever you uh, fill. It's always going to be a flat, even uh, surface on the top. And here is one of those molds and, uh, that, uh, and you can have the mold with the stem in it and it yields a hole. I'm just showing a few different possibilities. You'll see these again later in some still shots. This is using a regular bicycle reflector. I can use that as a mold. Um, this is a rubber stamp, just a regular rubber stamp. And the nice thing about the rubber stamps is it just peels right off. Yeah, and people are asking the about... The capacity of this is about 100%. I'm sorry? It's a, People are asking about a release, but you didn't even use any. Nope, no release on the rubber stamps. And this is a different kind of rubber stamp. I used some polymer clay to cordon off a certain section. And uh, the Lisa Pavelka rubber stamps work incredibly well, but I've used all sorts of rubber stamps and none of them need a release and all of them work perfectly. Well... Everyone wants to know best place to find silicone stamps. Uh, not stamps, the molds, you mean? Um, I'm sorry, the molds. Yep. It's basically on Maybe Amazon, silicone right? Silicone molds in Amazon, and you'll probably have 20 or 25 sites. They all work equally well. I have bought them from about, I think you see in the next slide, the whole pile of, of, uh, of, of uh you know things that i've i've uh used yeah look at that <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll get to that in a moment yeah there you go so i bought these probably in about 10 or 15 different sites they all work equally well the in the top left there that blue one that's yeah. actually a candy mold you can buy that in uh, in places where they have you know cooking shops where they have candy molds they work perfectly all of these things work I think I've seen them in Michael's in the pastry area there for yep, sure, too. Can, they do have them there. You can also sometimes buy candle molds. Oh, right, that right. That work. Right. And they, as long as they're made out of silicone, it does not require any kind of release whatsoever. There you go, Deb. You were asking about that release. All right, so here we can go back nope. to this video now. Yeah, and here's where I'm, I'm going to be showing to take those same molds, and you'll see again that it pops out of the uh, undercut mold. And it just pops right out. It also comes out completely polished. It doesn't show up terribly well in the videos, but it does. It comes out with a polished surface. The concrete will assume the surface of whatever it sets and cures against. Hmm, okay. So if it's a polished surface, it comes out polished, meaning that it actually has a reflective shiny surface. So I'm showing about taking some of these molds. Here's just a plain uh, cup mold. And what I'm doing, or that's a cone mold, but I'm taking this cup mold, and normally it would just give us a round uh, piece. You'll see those later. What I'm doing is just taking a piece of wire and altering the mold. And every single one of these molds can be altered in an infinite number of ways. So what I did then is I poured the concrete in, let it set with a flat top, and I get a, a form. You'll see it. this form I could not get any other way. Yeah, see, this is where mine gets blown, right, everyone? It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, the molds. We love the molds. Wait, alter the mold, too? <laughs> alter the mold. So I, And you'll see it later. I can actually take that mold and alter it. That's a larger size. And instead of having a perfectly round, faceted stone mold, I have one that's elongated. Yeah, that's the same crazy. Thing. Yeah, I can take – that's just a, 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 a square, uh, like a pyramidal mold. That is cool. And I can just put a wire around it and change the shape completely. I know you're doing again, it in that one as well. But wait, let yeah. me take a question here because this is really good. Sure. Um, Donna wants to know, how long does the concrete take to cure and can it be carved or is it too hard to quick? Uh, it takes an hour to cure. <clears throat> um, you can leave it into a mold for as infinite number of, uh, you know, however long. But it actually you can actually release it in about an hour. Wow. Okay. Stephanie wants to know, you guys have, I, yeah, uh, go ahead, hon. It will, it will cure in an hour. However, you will feel that it is still damp. That just means that there's still water that has to evaporate. Okay. But it's still, it's cured, even though it's damp. Uh, you guys have such a good question. Stephanie wants to know, can you use the mold for other things after using them for concrete? I guess Anything at all. The concrete will not, you can just wash out the residue. If there's any, like this concrete just came out of that mold 
and you can see the mold is completely clean. If there's any residue, you just uh, rinse it out. And yes, the answer is yes, you can use it for anything you want. I know it must be. Oh, Lori, so did you hear what he said before about where he gets his molds? I think everywhere. <laughs> just go to Amazon, just type in silicone molds and you will you will see there is there are literally hundreds of them and you can buy them in sets uh, you know they'll come like i show a little crystal that later on that i make a, a concrete crystal and um you can buy these crystal sets and they're about two inches high and they're all different uh figurations and you can buy a whole set for like six or seven bucks yeah yeah they're, they really are all over the place so it's uh all good. A all lot right. of them are labeled for um, epoxy resin, but they work equally well for virtually anything you want that will set in a mold. Yeah, well, that's what Heidi just asked. Will it bind with resin? <laughs> oh, yeah. Will it um, say? Oh, she yeah, said they're bind. They're made, they're made for resin, yeah. So, but the, she's saying that, are you saying, Heidi, can you, will it bind with resin, the concrete? You'll see. Wait, you, you're going to see some things. I think your question is going to be answered here. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, so carved before it sets. Did you answer that? I'm not sure you did. Kind of carved be before yeah. it sets? Yeah. You, you can kind of scratch into it and stuff. Carving is a little dodgy because um, uh, the answer is yes, you kind of can carve it. But if you're thinking of carving this the way you would like um, uh, metal clay or uh, fired polymer clay, where you get those nice, even, smooth cuts, like with a, a one of those dockyard tools or something, the answer is no. Okay. Because there's aggregate in the concrete and it it, um, it pops out. Okay. Oh, that it's makes like sense. Thin. Yeah, very, yeah, yeah. Very, very fine aggregate. Yep, yep. Um, all right. So here we have, everyone's already loving this mold, this bracelet mold. It's, and it's, that's the way it comes out of the mold with those facets. Yeah, that's crazy. So there is a beautiful concrete bracelet with those kind but of facets. But then what I did is I took that mold and altered it just a little bit. Of course you did. Mm -hmm. A couple of clips. And then that's just a little section now that I can horse around with. And I can flatten the bottom of that and set it like in a, in a bezel. Yeah, just crazy. And here is, <laughs> I really like this. This is actually a baby nipple from a bottle. All right, we can see and it here. I, I put a, you know, and then you see that it's a different form. I also like this because you can see in the um, clear nipple, there's writing on the right side mm -hmm. and the veracity of the concrete when you cast it, you actually see the printing on the right side there. <laughs> That's so crazy. this concrete will pick up every single little, the smallest detail of hair, it will show up in the concrete. Crazy. Another altered mold. This is what you mix. This is what you buy to mix resin in. Mm. And it comes in part of a set. When you buy the mold, you'll no normally get one of these containers. But it's just a hunk of, for me, it's just a hunk of silicone that the concrete won't stick to. So I put a paper, I uh, put a uh, clothespin on it and I just horsed around to see what I'd get. And you got that. You'll see what I get. And that's what I got. Geez, you know, I just realized it looks like a bedpan. <laughs> oh, don't say that. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. It looks like a seashell. It looks like a seashell, yes. Thank you. <laughs> More altering. Again, that's the one that I showed before. So that's the mold. That's the way I altered it. And that's the form that results. That polished surface is untouched. I did not do anything to it. That's exactly the way it came out of the mold. Yeah, that's like... And that will be the surface that you have with every single mold. Now, that's a skin on the concrete, which is the finest particles of the concrete. Sometimes what I will do is I'll actually take that skin off. And in a couple of slides, you'll see that um, when you take that skin off, you actually see the aggregate, which are these fine particles that they mix into the cement. And it's that with, of mixing the particles or aggregate into cement is what makes it concrete. Ah, thank you for that. All right, wait, Cement. while we're on this, let's just take some questions, yep. Robert. Hold that sure. thought. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. No, it's not, Lori, it's not your typical concrete from Lowe's. In the handout, no, no. go to go to Robert's site and you'll see in his store, he sells containers of it 
so not to worry. Don't go to Lowe's. That's what I thought at first, too. Don't do that. No, you will not get the same results at all. No. Heidi wants to know, how do you minimize the bubbles when casting? Um, you can use colder water will um, minimize the bubbles to a certain extent. And then if you tap it underneath, like was in the video, um, I, you, it was hard to see, but I was actually tapping it with my fingers. Mm -hmm. Or if you have something that you can put on the table and pound the table around the mold, mm -hmm. you'll see the bubbles rise up. You may get, you may get bubbles. Um, it's concrete. And part of the concreteness that I like is that. It's, okay. it's a little bit rougher. It's not, you may not get is perfectly smooth, even surface. I invite that because I like the, the nature of concrete. If you want to minimize it, you can do the things that I just said. John, I think that answers your question as well. I'll lower yourself. Oh, you also, when, when you're mixing it, don't stir it up too much. Okay, to help keep the bubbles down. Okay. Yes. Um, Lori is very cute. She said, it's not a bedpan, it's a pedal. Thank you, Lori. Uh, Thank you. Yes. I appreciate that. Um, Oh, it looks like a, oh, a Bronze Age lamp to someone. All right, yeah, see? Uh, <laughs> Francis like, nope, looks like a bedpan. Uh, let's see, Mags, you got your question answered about curing, I think. Um, I think, I just want to go through quick here. Oh, because wait, you're going to see Brandy. Yeah, there's color coming up, so just wait. Uh, let's see. And any questions we, we miss, just email me at Craftcast. I'll make sure Robert gets it. Um, can you add mica powder and glitter? Oh yeah, you can, Andrea. Just hold on. Yep, you're gonna see things. Uh, you can. Well, add... however, may I may I address that? Yep, go on. If you add things to it, um, like mica powders and all of those things, please remember that concrete is opaque. So unless they're on the surface, yeah, you're not gonna point. see them. That's a good point. <laughs> but those can all be done afterwards. Those can all be every kind of finish that you can imagine. You can bring to bear on the concrete after it's set and cured. The one thing I learned from Robert and all of his classes is you can sort of do anything. You just have to figure out where to put it in the process. Would you say that's accurate, Robert? It's material process procedure, and I couldn't agree more. There you go. Uh, let's see. Carol just wants to know, can you place a stamp on the bottom of the mold if you want to create a design? Yes. There you go. I think, yeah. I think you can do it all. Uh, let me just go through a few more. Oh, good question. Marianne, she wants to know, is regular tap water? Yeah, there's nothing special. You don't have to use distilled water, just regular tap water. Um, and I've done this all over the world. So, you know, it. It. I've never had a problem with it. Okay. Uh, oh, well, Lori, this is another good question. Can metal and polymer stick to this? Um, it, it depends. Uh, and I'm, I actually, in one of the other craft casts that I've done, I actually show about inlaying polymer clay into the concrete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's another thing, in a, a question, it's way too long an answer for right here. But, you but can, the answer is basically yes. You can mix it the, all together. The is yeah. Yes, you can. It's cool. Yep. You'll see, and if you want to know exactly which class it is, just send us an email at support at craftcast.com, but all the links are in that handout. Georgie has a good question. That I bet you were looking at, yeah, like the bracelet. That bracelet that we looked back here, Robert, the one that we all love, yep. the mold, does that stand up alone as concrete wearing it? It's fine? No. No. Uh, okay. I wish I could say yes, but it would be unlikely. Um, okay. What I have done is I've actually done anti-clasted bracelets uh, out of metal and tried to have the concrete around it, but it's a pretty complicated process. Okay. Okay, so you don't want to make it solid just like that. But you could certainly make resin ones out of there and add in things. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, so now we have another video. Uh, here we go. This is the resin, right, Robert? Um, well, I'm showing what, it, what this is, is if you want to see what you're going to get by holding the concrete, by altering your molds or holding them in different ways, what you can do is those are the forms, those are resin forms out of those molds. However, if I want to see what it's going to look like before I actually put the concrete into it, what I can do is I can actually just take a colored liquid and pour it in the mold and tip it over and you'll see what you're going to get. Mm, okay. And I think I, I add some coffee in here. If I oh have yeah, the right video. that's coffee. Okay. Yeah, that's coffee. So I poured it in. And then you'll see, I just tip over the mold a little to see what I'm gonna get. Good visual. So that's the, that's the form 
that I would get if I put the concrete in and tipped over that mold in that way. Cool. So I can use that just as a, a kind of a, a before thought as to what I'm going to, what it's going to yield. I just took a rag and cleaned it out. So I, I poured it concrete in, tipped it over exactly the way I just showed you with the coffee. And then what comes out is that form. Very right cool. Is that resin right in the middle that's blue and sort of? Yes, it is. Okay, yeah, that's great looking. And this is just the cone and I tipped it over and that's the form that I get <laughs> right there. I'm laughing because so the one in the front, yeah. the one in the front is upright and the one in back of it is tilted. Same mold. Yeah, that is so cool. I was just thinking this and Patrick just typed in, how do you hold the mold in place when tipped? <laughs> Cause we're um, all if you have a container of rice. Oh, good idea. Put it in the rice and just tip it over. Good idea. It'll keep in any in any way that you want to tip it. Just a just a, some you know rice or sand, but sand gets stuck on it, so the rice doesn't. Love that. All right, let me take a few more questions before we move on. Lisa, um, seems like the audio has cleared up. I think too many people are online. Uh, not you guys, but the internet in general. I'm thinking. But Lisa wants to know. Um, your concrete, go to Robert's site. It's in the handout. What's it called again, Robert? Fobone.com. Fobone.com. F-A-U-X-B-O-N-E.com. But it will, be, it will be less expensive. It'll be $17 a container instead of 20 Oh, good. So we're even getting a little yes. savings. Uh, it's go play is what I say. Um, Francesca, with that square mold, could you make an actual, oh, good idea, box, then make a lid? Not a solid square box. You mean put something in there so you actually had a, a box at the well, end? If, if actually there is a mold that will yield that, it's that box with a square Inset. in the center yeah, okay. that is made out of silicone. So it just goes around that and you actually, it will yield a box. Yeah. There's a mold for that. Yeah, I saw some of these molds. It's crazy what's yeah. out there. Okay, this is another. I love all these questions, you guys. I know everyone's thinking creatively. When you, um, Lori wants to know, when you mix the concrete and need water, could you use that coffee or Kool-Aid to create color to the concrete? You can, but again, the concrete is opaque, so um, it, it's a very, very slight color difference that you would get, almost none. The pigments that I sell are special pigments specifically for concrete so you'll see in a little bit you'll see one that's blue and in the amount of concrete that i was using um that was only a 16th of a teaspoon of color uh, but it takes these very special uh uh pigments to make a real color change you can use acrylic paint and all of that the the uh, the color the amount of color change you're going to get is very 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 slight if anything there you go. So, but I forgot you also have pigments. I forgot about that. I do yes. Um, uh, and there's that. There's that same thing. The cone is what it would normally uh, come out of there, and then you'll see that other form is what you get when you tip it over. Oh yeah, that's cool. Very cool. Uh, Nancy. Oh yeah, you can use a free. Well, you mean by free form shape? How he's changing the shapes? I think that's what you mean. Let me know. Yes, because he's using all kinds of shapes and sort of playing around with them. I don't know, you could probably even use, did I do it in one of your workshops? Sorry, um, we used the thick rubber bands and you know how the, yep. they're, they're like a quarter of an inch thick and if you just, they'll stand up, you know, and I poured resin into that. I bet you could pour concrete into that and then you get a free form sort of quarter and inch if you, thick. If you pour, if you take some uh, tape, like packing tape, wrap it around something so the sticky side is up. You can oh, yeah, take that rubber yeah. band Stick it down to the sticky side of the tape and pour in whatever you want, resin, concrete, right. and it works perfectly. Right. So, Nancy, that's a great way to do or, free form. Or just, I'm sorry, or just polymer clay. Oh, right. Just make a little mold with polymer clay. Just yeah, unbaked yeah. polymer clay. You can do anything you want. Pour the concrete in, it comes out perfectly. See, this is what I mean about mind blowing at this point. So, all right. So, we have some more pictures here. We have a bunch of pictures to look through. Okay, so, so this there's the regular mold. This is a lens. I use a lot of lenses these days. That's a lens. I just put it into the mold. I didn't use anything. I didn't glue it or anything. I just stuck it down. 
because of the nature of the silicone, it actually sticks to the silicone really well so that when I pull this out, it's actually one that I had before. You'll see it in a couple of subsequent slides. That lens is in the concrete and you just clean it off a little bit and you have a, a lens, a piece of concrete with a lens and you're seeing through it and whatever's on the back of it is magnified. Yeah, I love that. Um, but again, no, no glue, no release, no nothing. That's what's so cool and how you can add everything in there. Wait, I'm going to give your site to everyone here so they can find it. If you don't have the handout, I'm typing it in the box for everyone. Uh, yeah, you know what's so funny? Michelle just asked, because everyone loves that frigging bracelet mold with that in there. <laughs> I know. And they're like, is there a way to stabilize it? So I don't know. To stabilize what? This concrete so that people can make that... Um, bracelet concrete they saw. Bracelet? yeah the bangle you can uh you can if you go uh to like virtually any hardware store or any big box you can get something called ad mix a d m i x and it's milk thin milk colored uh liquid polymer that they use for reinforcing concrete or having concrete stick to new concrete stick to old concrete. And you will increase the strength by four or five times. So you could actually make, mix that instead of water, mix that into the concrete, cast it the way I've just shown you, and that bracelet would be strong enough. If you're gonna like wear it to an art opening or something, if you're gonna wear it to go shopping to the grocery store or something like that, if we can go to the grocery store, mm -hmm. um, it, it's probably not the kind of thing you're going to be able to get away with. But if you're doing it for a special thing, you could probably get away with it if you cast the concrete with that ad mix in it. Okay. Uh, let's see. I took a – yeah, I know. He always makes great stuff. You know that. Here is the, here's the concrete with a little bit of blue pigment. I didn't bother mixing it up because it's like watching paint dry to you know, watch me mix. But this is just a little tiny bit. Here is the bottom of this is that skin that I said before, the fine particles. That's just mm -hmm. the way it dries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The left-hand upper part is just taking off a little bit of that skin to start showing some of that aggregate, some of those particles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the right side, I've gotten rid of the particles, and I put some uh, matte. Uh, Mod Podge over it, oh, right. and it darkens it and makes it a little bit shiny. So, looks like denim. Just, it does look like denim, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Looks yeah. like a denim. And that's color. just that empty void is a raw piece of polymer clay that you saw in the slide before this. I just took it out of the mold, took out the polymer clay, and that hole is from the little stem that is in the mold itself. It's so great. Love it. So I could fill that up with resin. To go back to yep. that mm -hmm. question before, I could fill that up with resin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right from the question before. Yeah, now you have a place to put your resin. Sure. Yeah. Mind or anything else. Yeah. I'm telling you, mind blown, people. All right. So here's that piece that came out of the mold with the lens. And again, I didn't do anything. There's no, you know, no anything. And that's how clean it comes out of the mold, by the way. Yeah, that's great. Didn't you say this no, is a I'm, bath bomb or something? Mold? Yeah, these are yeah for those bath bombs that they make. There's a top that fits on each of these, and with a little hole in it, and you actually pour the the soap mixture or the bath bomb mixture in that little hole. This is just the bottom part of it. Yeah, that's really again, cool. Again, that shine is exactly how the, the concrete comes out of the mold. I love Allison, that. Allison, may I interrupt for just a moment? Yeah, I, I am a little cognizant of the time. Oh, we're fine. Want, we're fine. I don't want to miss your rogue soldering. No, we're fine. Okay. I, I, we keep it going like an hour and it's fine. Fine. We're all hanging. There's a good sample of um, who, you were, who asked before about the box, like if that was a bigger hole. These are beads, I know you told me, but it yeah. could, if it was a bigger inset, it could be the box. Right, Robert? Yeah. The box just has a, yes, and, and I'm sorry I did, I should have, you know, if, um, if you write me sometime, I'll make one for you and show you in a, if you want to get a hold of me on my email or something like that. And I'll, I'll make one and I'll show it exactly what it looks like and how to do it. Add that to your resin class. I will. I definitely will. Thank you. We're so excited. I know. So you guys, look at this. I just want to say when Robert showed me this, I was like, are you kidding me? That's like concrete beads. I mean, and it's by the way, fabulous. it's lighter than polymer clay in weight. I mean, what a great shape. All right. Here's another. Love these little, I don't know, gem All cut stones. Size they, faceted stones. Yeah. I mean, possibilities 
are spheres. wacky crazy. Yeah. And again, it's lighter than polymer clay, glass, or metal, or any of those things. It's lightest weight, lighter than any of those. This is an ups. This, if you write that mold, this is actually the bottom of the mold, the stand of the mold. It's usually a big pyramid. But I look at the bottom and I saw a small pyramid on the inside, and I filled it up part way and made this frame. I know, right? All right. So I love how people are already thinking. We're going to get to that people. He's going to show. He's going to talk about finishing it off, how he does um, and what he uses. Everyone's already, I know, designing in their head. I love this just on one of the rubber stamps. Standard rubber stamp. And then look at that. Isn't that fabulous to add? Can't you just imagine that even set in silver with something else hanging off yeah. the bottom? I mean, the brain, the brain is blown. Another rubber, another rubber stamp that I just, the curve of the concrete piece in the foreground the curve just came from putting the concrete into that uh, rubber stamp and putting something underneath the end there on the right hand side. You can see it's curved and that's how the concrete dried and cured. cured. Uh, yeah, we're going to get to clean up in one second, you guys. I'm not avoiding your yep. questions. Um, Ursula wanted to know, good question. She just wants to clarify the admix. You don't need to add that if you're just doing a pendant or some of these other things. That was just. No, no, no. No, right. the con yeah. this concrete is wildly strong. Yeah. Probably a third of all of the things you're looking at, I dropped on, on the floor just because I'm clumsy <laughs> and I was doing this really, really fast. Um, he and did. It's incredibly, incredibly strong. Robert threw this together just to brag. I said, Robert, could you come on and talk all your fun stuff? He's like, yeah, I'll go over to the studio and just do it all. And he did and sent me videos. So come on. I mean, it's so exciting. I know you're all thinking of projects already. So, all right, Robert, tell everyone what you did here. They'll blow their mind a little so more. These are just little parts, wings and gears and stuff. Uh, and what I did is I actually um, riveted a little gear to one of the wings. And then I just took those parts with a little bit of cyanoacrylate glue. That's the crazy glue. Mm -hmm. I use Zappagap. Those are just some, those are some silicone molds that I've made. And that's what I'm showing here about making your own silicone molds. So I have these parts. I just glued them down to a piece of, of faux bone because the faux bone is dead flat and nothing ultimately will stick to it. So even though I glued those down, I can pop those off later and use them for something else. And the glue that I use is this Zappagap, which is a cyanoacrylate, again, like crazy glue or the Gorilla Glue that's a cyanoacrylate. And I just found that Zappagap's the best. This is from Cool Tools. It's the two-part cold mold silicone. And it's spectacular stuff. I've used about six or seven different brands and I have nothing to do with cool tools at all, but I have just found that this is this is the best stuff that I've ever found. It mixes really, really quickly. It's a little bit more pliable, and you'll see in a moment, to get some of those really fine details around the gears, the wings, and all these very, very small spaces, this is a little bit uh, more viscous when it's mixed up. So I can kind of smear it into all those little places. What I'm showing you here is just uh, mix it, you roll it, fold it in half, twist it, and roll it again. And this is in real time. So it only takes about 30 seconds to uh, go from the two parts to the uh, finished piece, just no streaks in it. Here I'm breaking off a little piece, smearing it in so I can make sure that it get into all those little spaces. Sometimes when you make these molds, you just have a big wadge of mm -hmm. the stuff. Yeah, this is great. Down, you, get a, you get a void. So this is a way of avoiding that. Just smear it in. And yeah. then I'll take the rest of it, the big wadge that I have. Wadge, by the way, is a, a, a Britishism that I picked up. Oh. <laughs> um, that just means a big lump. And then mm. I just put the big lump over it and smear it down. But I've already smeared in around all those fine parts. I put the link in for Cool Tools. We love them. They're delivering still. Um, and they're still working, yeah. Yeah, we love them. Again, I don't have any affiliation. I have just found that this is the best stuff, so. Yeah, we love so knowing that. Them, and it cures, this cures in five minutes. And this is one that I had made earlier of the same mold. Yeah, I just took the concrete that. out. That's concrete. Mm -hmm. Incredible definition. It. It's 100% veracity. Now, Both in the mold and in the concrete in the mold. This is a different one that I had made at a different time. Same thing. Um, 
So all those little spaces. Now, I'm sure people are going to write this in. You could put, now you have that mold, you could use it for metal clay, polymer clay. All of those things. Yeah. Resin. Resin. Halo. Yeah. It's silicone. Nothing sticks to it at all, no matter what. Oh, Laura, you have a good question. Um, do you need any more ventilation than normal for that kind of mold mixing, or is it just your normal? Oh, no, there's no ventilation needed at all. Okay. There you go. None good whatsoever. question. You guys are good. Uh, yeah, no, that's a very good question, and, and no, it is completely safe. It's what they use to make molds of ears when they're going to uh, make a hearing aid for someone. Oh, okay. So it can set against your skin the whole thing. It's, there's no no danger at all. This is one I had made of a, a bicycle reflector. I used a little polymer clay. That's the, the circle. is made out of polymer clay to make a shape that I wanted out of the concrete from the mold. I didn't want the whole mold, just mm -hmm, a little part. Mm -hmm. And the next one is the result. Uh, all right, Carol, wait. I'm trying to take your question here. Let's see. Can you pierce concrete? Is that what you're asking, Carol? Mm -hmm. so you, you've put drill bits through it, right? Sure. Yeah, you that's use what I what are, You use what are the diamond bits? that are core bits, C-O-R-E, core bits. They're the ones that are like a hollow cylinder. Uh, you can buy them on loads, any any, any jewelry supply uh, site will have them. Um, I know Contenti has them, I, uh, I'm just all of them has it, have them. And they're just hollow bits and you can drill right through the concrete. There you a go. A little bit of water on it, you drill right through, it's no problem at all. Uh, let me just take a few more questions. Um, We'll just take that at the end. We'll make sure in your, uh, Robert will make sure that the price is up there with the discount and everything on his site, not to worry. We'll handle all that. Oh, Juliet wants to know if you're going to make a mold of a tree root, do you have to put something on the root so you won't get the residue of the wood in the mold? Everyone wants to know if you need to use a release. Barbara wants no, to know. No, Dottie. no, Sil these, This silicone will not stick to any anything. You, if, well, I'm bald, but if you have hair, you can put it on your hair and it will peel right off. It will not pull your hair out. It'll peel right off. It will not stick to anything. If there is a little bit of residue from the root, uh, you just brush it. It will slough right off of the silicone. It will never, it won't stick. There you go. Everyone's like, does it stick? Does it stick? Uh, nope, it doesn't. Nope, it won't stick to anything. <laughs> it's silicone. There you go. Um, there is a resource list in the handout that you can see in the GoToMeeting uh, interface, or um, I'll tell you all at the end too how you'll get it. So not to worry about any of that. I know some of you had couldn't hear in the beginning, so no worries. Uh, and I think Dottie just wanted to know, I think you sort of answered this, if you're shaping dried concrete, it just doesn't carve like you would think. It's not like carving, you said, with no. dock tools or anything like that. No, it's like not that. at all. Not at all. But you can, you can kind of carve it using uh, like a flex shaft with a mizzy wheel, a, a grinding wheel, or a, uh, a cutoff wheel or something like that. You can use power tools to do it. So you can do some grinding. All right, so here's and one of my favorite things. with an old file. And that's how you that's how you sort of finished off when you were showing some a things. Lot. Yeah. Yep. He, that's in another video that I've done with you. Right, right. Um, the grinding and filing and all of that. This that's is the a, reflector this is we love. That's crazy detail, Robert. And you can actually see the design, the triangular design yeah. in, the, in the reflector comes right out into the concrete. Yeah, no, it's... And that's uh, just some raw polymer clay that I put around it. Same kind of thing. So now you have your clay. That's keeping it from spilling everywhere. And then you put your yes. concrete. Got it. So I, And I can roll out clay, use a cookie cutter to cut a shape out of the polymer clay, take that cut out shape, put it on whatever I want to put it on a rubber stamp or reflector, whatever, and I'll have a specific shape out of the uh, polymer clay. And that's the shape that will result right. from the concrete being poured into it. Great way to mix it all together. I know everyone's brains are working overtime right now. This is, uh, and in a, another video that I've done with Allison, I talked about doing um, die forming, but not in a press, just in a vise. You do not need a big press to do really involved die forming. Uh, I came up with a way of just using some magnets and an old vise and for die forming, and it works perfectly. Any die form that you have, you can use as a mold for the concrete. <laughs> just a little wax on the inside, pledge, 
whatever just and it releases immediately you can blow through these these are just finished pieces i know Again, i love that look how beautiful that is everyone if you have any other questions about this just drop them in the box there uh, oh, Georgie, you get it now. I understand. Oh, here's a good one. Claudia just wanted to know, can you embed your findings into your concrete? Absolutely. Yep. I mean, look at this. I know it's very inspiring. Beautiful. A fun, that fun was medium. Allison, it said, what? It said, I don't know if you could read that last one. Oh, she knew she could no matter what they said. <laughs> Yes, that's for you. Oh, thank you, darling. Yeah, that's sort of true. Check with my husband. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love this it. This is the other side of that one. That's the other side of the one that I showed at the beginning. Oh, that's fabulous for the other side. Yeah, 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 side, yeah. And I love how that wire has left it oxidizes it or something. That yep. is fabulous. Yeah. And that's all sterling silver. That's actually a pretty large piece. This is beach glass embedded in. Yeah, it's this just, is in a book that uh, Eve Sherman did about using beach glass. Beautiful. So many fun things in there. I mean, it's just, see what I mean, everyone? He makes, he blows the mind how he puts it all together. Gorgeous. Stones, concrete. Metal clay, that's bronze metal clay. That's what that is. Oh, God, love that. And copper metal clay at the bottom there, yeah. Okay, everyone, and what do you think the, that is? I want people to guess. What do you think that dial okay. is? Go back into your brain while Robert's explaining everything else. I want to know. I want to hear some guesses from everyone. Go ahead, Robert. And that's a, a, a resin out of that same pyramid mold that you saw before. That's resin with just one little jump ring in there. But because of the way it refracts, it looks like there are jump rings all over the place. It's just one little jump ring in the middle. Okay, people are guessing. Oh, no, not a stove like dial. It, yeah, guess you're right. People are getting it. It's from your locker dial. You guys are good. They're knowing. A lot of people are knowing. I was like, it looks familiar, but I couldn't I couldn't totally remember. I freaking love that. When I was teaching high school and they got rid of all of the combination locks, I, I took them all. Of course you did, because how could you resist? <laughs> yes, that's a broken piece of glass. That I drilled a hole in and set a, ta a tube set stone in the glass, and then I would copy behind it, and then that whole thing is set into concrete. See what I mean? What I was saying in the beginning of this, mind blown, so many things to think about. You guys are good. So many of you guessed what it was. Uh, this was made for somebody about uh, a saying in, in Hebrew, and, and it was the grandmother. And the dime that had been given to the mother, which is the next one down, and she gave the daughter, the last one at the bottom, that same dime, but she wanted a necklace about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the back is, I shouldn't have put it in the back, but the next one is just the back with showing the whole lineage and stuff like that. Gorgeous. This is jewelry you hang on the wall when you're not wearing it. And this is an old piece. Um, just copper boxes with no soldering Trading. and another subsequent in another video that we've done together, Allison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember. Love that. And this is faux bone on the right hand side, uh, tinted concrete and it's polished st uh, sterling silver behind it, which is reflecting the pearls that are set and come up out of that mold. You can't quite see it, but they actually come up out into space. And you see the reflection behind it. <laughs> Mag said, jewelry porn, it's true. It's like amazing, beautiful <laughs> stuff to look at. It's that like, was awfully kind. Thank you. So great. All right. Let me take a few Allison, more. thank yeah. you. Oh, absolutely stunning. Wait, let's just do a few more questions. And if I don't get all the questions, just email them to me, guys. Um, let's see. Cynthia shows how old we are, you know, with knowing our school lockers. Yes. Uh, love the ring in the middle of the pyramid. I know, right? It's just, that's just one jump ring in the middle, Maureen, he told me. It just sort of reflects yeah, all the different ways. Uh, let me see here, Katie. Robert, how did you separate the top of the lock from the base? Did it just pop off, I guess? Uh, you had to play, uh, you had to play with it. It depends on the kind of lock it is. Oh. It's a little complicated. Uh, Marilyn has a good question in this one. 
how did you keep the sayings you embed in the concrete? How do you keep them, protect the paper? Uh, with just a little bit of Mod Podge, any PVA glue. It has to be PVA. It can't just be um, a white glue. Uh, PVA it. is the polyvinyl acetate, uh, and that's waterproof after it dries. And you have to make sure that after you cut it out, you, I mounted on the glass, I cut around it. You actually have to make sure that you put PVA around the edges where you've cut the paper so the, it doesn't seep in that way, not just on the back. I love it. Oh, you guys, fabulous, right? Robert, thank you for getting this all together. Anyone who has any more questions, go to his site. You can send him an email if you have any questions By about means. buying the supplies, um, color additives. We love it. We love it. All right. I'm just going to finish up here. You can sort of use this in conjunction what, um, yeah, everyone's saying thank you. What May Robert was doing. One note, yeah, Allison? absolutely. You can do two notes. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, in the midst of doing a new site, but my old site has the price of the concrete is 20. I can't change it right now. Okay. But what I will do is if you order concrete, I will issue you a $3 refund immediately. Okay. There you go. Unless you'd like to add some other things on and we can we can work it out that way. But it says 20. It's only 17. And I'll issue you a $3 refund automatically. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again, Allison. Are you kidding? My pleasure. I'm very exciting. All right. So now I told Robert, I said, maybe this will go well with what you're doing. And I'm calling it rogue soldering. First off, there is, I teach a, a class, it's like two hours on CraftCast, soldering and fusing, where I walk you through every step, the solders, when to use it, how to make a bunch of bracelets you're going to see in a second. Uh, but I wanted to show you what I call rogue soldering, which is a way to play, to learn more about your torch, how to solder. You can't really screw up because, I'll show you why. So this is sort of what we're doing here. So let me pull this video up. Okay, so take a look at this. This is um, the two pieces I'm going to show you. So the funny part about this is that um, I had a bunch of scraps, but when I was at Robert's, I'll show you my scrap pile. I bought more scraps from him. So these are the bracelets you learn in the class that I teach on soldering and fusing. So that one, you, I teach you how to put in bezels, how to add lots of bezels, how to change your solder so it all works. Um, you also learn how to make this bracelet here with the great little shapes and then add a big round ball of silver in the middle or just add lots of balls. Those bracelets are set up. Here's one with everything on it. They're set up so that the repetitive process, you really learn how to solder. But then I wanted to do something where you just going wild, going rogue. And you can wear them all together, which I think is really fun too. So here's what you do. Uh, there they are again. Um, so if you've worked with metal, you have scraps. That's what my scraps look like. Just the pieces I've cut off. I have no idea what gauge anything is in here anymore or what pieces of solder or things that didn't work. Uh, Robert had a huge box of scrap stuff. I bought like, I don't know, an ounce or two ounces from him because he had some fun shapes in there. But it's all just fun, funky stuff. And you don't know what you got. So this is a way to play. Uh, so I took some of the pieces that I thought looked good. And I got some 22 gauge um, uh, silver to make a bracelet that I had, some fine silver. And I just shaped, I cut it out, and I made a little cuff. All right, so here I go. I've put pieces on there and I put a little flux on and I'm using my acetylene torch and I'm just going for it. I am not working. I'm not trying to make, um, here's the only thing I'm, I don't want to have happen is to burn the cuff in the back. But if I do, it becomes scrap. You're not wasting it. You can still recycle it. But I just want to play with shapes. So I started playing with shapes there to start to get them to adhere, to, to solder. And now I took just solder I had left over. I didn't care what what temperature that solder was, because I'm just going to start playing and melting and getting it under the different shapes. So you can see right there, I have a little ball of solder. I'm just heating it, heating it. If you don't have an acetylene torch, you can use your uh, butane torch. You're just going to heat it until it melts, and, and you're going to melt some of the shape. It's a great way to start learning how to solder and not melt your shapes to just try this. But I'm going past the solder and I'm letting the shape sort of melt to and change into a new shape and not worry about it. You'll see one that I do in a little bit. Uh, so I just keep heating it, heating it, and you can see it starts glowing that 
red color back at you. And then it turns like all of a sudden, if you just see it there, see how it got just shining like a mirror? It's like an ice skating rink with the top layer sort of melting a little bit of the ice and it flows. And you can see there it flows. Now, if we were doing a really nice piece that we wanted to design differently, we wouldn't want that flow showing, or we wouldn't do it this way. But this is just going for it, what I call rogue soldering. And you're just playing with the designs and shapes and putting it all together. So you'll see you can keep adding more pieces. The idea here is to just to get everything stuck down. So there I'm putting in another piece to get that to sort of uh, stick to the back. Um, but I'm not worried about changing the shapes uh, at all. See, Beth is saying, see, it's a great way to use your leftovers. And here's the thing. If it doesn't work, you recycle the whole thing if you don't like it at the end. So there's no worries. But you see, I'm really going at that piece. I don't care if that piece melts a little bit. It looks even more fun when it starts melting. So I've taken past what I would normally do to solder something to see what new shape appears because it's just fun. Uh, and I'm just... Um, I just don't want to melt the back of the cuff. And if I do, I just start over again, no big deal. But you can see there how things are. You can see how um, the solder is starting to show there and all that kind of stuff. Now you can uh, quench it, cool it, see where you're at. <clears throat> Keep adding more, put a little of your flux in, uh, you know, take a look, okay, what's sticking up? Where do I want to add more leftover pieces? Uh, it's fun. Um, on one of the cuffs, you'll see in a little bit too, before I made it into a cuff, I just hammered patterns into it, or maybe it was even leftover, I can't remember. I still used it because I loved it. All right, so here now I've added more. Now watch, this is what I mean about not being afraid to just go rogue. I keep heating it, and that wire right there, that is, um, those are old jump rings. I just layered on old jump rings. Uh, and when you put on a little bit of your um, flux, it holds them in place. See how I'm melting the jump rings there? I don't care. Now they have little granules at the end. I'm loving that. I just want to get everything to adhere to be soldered to the back. So it's like uh, art happening. I'm not worried about what some of the pieces happen to them. I'm just going with what looks cool and to keep going. See, and that piece wasn't stuck yet. So I'm just going to make sure, just heat it more, put some more solder in there. I was doing this with Aaron who's another wonderful instructor. We have classes of hers. And she's like, just just put more crap on it. Just keep firing the hell out of it. And that's true. It's really fun. I think it suits these times right now. Get out your stuff. Don't give up. Wait till you see at the end. You, you know, you love it. It looks great stacked with other pieces. I get so many compliments on these. It makes me laugh because it's really just going for it. So just keep heating. Throw down different pieces. If something doesn't look good to you, uh, you know, quench it, file it off, cut it off with your clippers if you didn't like it, push it down. It's just really playing with all the leftover shapes. You know, don't, you don't have to cut anything new for this. You just keep loading it up and putting it on. Uh, and just, you know, like I said, the solder was left over. It just didn't matter. I'm just going to keep going for it, keep heating it and going for it. Uh, you can see right there, it just sort of did one of those wonderful melt. See, that whole piece I put on now is melting down, but it's changing into another really cool piece and adhering in the process. So it's a great way to like really work with your torch and see what happens too. You know, you you can play and not worry that you're going to ruin a piece. You're just making this piece better when you ruin it. Uh, so that's what's fun about it. And like I said, you can use, if you have, I'm using uh, acetylene here, but if you just have um, the little propane torches, that works fine. Uh, sometimes when I had was teaching this in person with students, um, someone would have, an, I held two torches, one in each hand if you wanted to get something really hot. It's all workable. Uh, and then fun, the, the thing that's fun about this is you don't know what's gonna happen. It sort of happens in front of you. Uh, I do love, say Robert, what's in these pans? Is that vermiculite? No, it's pumice. Pumice, right. Thank you. Um, they help. You know, if you have one of those little soldering pans that you can stick things up in, and then you saw how I just turned it like that so you can get all around. Um, one thing to know that you learn if you do the soldering is sort of if you want the, you have to keep the whole piece hot. If you want something to solder to travel, the solder follows your heat. So 
in this case, I was just working on one side for a while, but you know, you have to then reheat the whole piece to go to the other side if you want something to solder. Those are all part of learning how to solder, which I'm also recommending that you learn how to do that. So, so look how fabulous. So I just put these in my regular um, spare X to clean it up afterwards. Uh, if things were too pointy, I might just file them down, throw them in a tumbler. Uh, one of these here had um, even, I don't know, something, it could have been copper or gold or something like that. Just, it'll all look great. You can see the back of that one. I have a stamp on the skinny one right here. I let the round shape stick up past the cuff. I just made sure everything was um, filed and sanded so it's all smooth to wear. And then they're great fun to just wear together. If you hate them all, they just go back in the recycling bin and you just send them back for your recycling money. So it's a, it's a no-brainer fun uh, to do. Brilliant. Thank you, brilliant. honey. Thank you. It's, oh, it, it, we know how brilliant. to play. I we know how it. to play. Um, all right, let me take a few questions before we finish up here. Uh, you guys, you like that using scraps, right? It's all... Um, Lori, good question. It's the flux. What's that flux call that we use in solder? I'm blanking out right now. It has the yellow color, the indicator. It's your basic soldering flux. Uh, Not patterns. No, it's the other one. It's your basic soldering flux. My blanking out right now. Lori, send me in. Liquid um, or paste? You can do both. You can use liquid or paste. I happen to use yeah. liquid usually, but it's basic um, soldering flux, Lori. Uh, thank you, Georgie. Um, my base metal on that bracelet, good question, Nancy, is 22 gauge, 21 gauge fine silver. Uh, so it, it was easy to work with. Um, the soldering is on your list to do great idea to get over the fear hump. Yes, Monica, that's what I'm talking yes. about. That's what's really good to do this. So Patrick said, make money from your mistakes. Thank you, Patrick. See? See you oh, go. nice idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can use the retain torch, Lori. Absolutely. Here's here's a little tip with the butane, the little, I like those little blazer ones. Um, make sure it's really full because if you're using it and it's down past, let's say down two thirds, it's noticeably cooler, even though there's still a lot of butane in it. So if for some reason it's not um, melting your solder, just fill it up again. I notice that makes a huge difference with those babies. Uh, it's very good. Uh, let's see. Um, the pumice pan. Oh, Laura, you can get those Rio anywhere that they sell silversmithing supplies. It's one of those basic, basic um, soldering things. Is a soldering pan with pumice in it. Thank you, Max. You can also, May, uh, yeah. you can also um, just get a regular um, baking pan. Fill it with the pumice that you can get, but one. Of, but the uh, you can also just use the lazy susan that you can buy a, a base that you can buy at um, like any big box store. There you go. Yeah, you can really make do. I know Cynthia's like love scraps, right? They are really interesting. It's yeah. great to play with. Um, if you have any, the solder again is just basic um, soldering. Oh wait, I'm sorry. The solder. Okay, the solder. Nadia, I didn't know what solder I was using. That was the fun of all of it. I used everything scrap. <laughs> that was I the thing. It. But if you want to learn the proper way, which I was taught the proper way, and there is a CraftCast class that I teach on making all those fun bracelets the proper way, because I'm all for that, take that class. And I go over everything, four different kinds of totters, um, from easy or soft to medium, hard, IT, um, intense temperature. They're called different things, different places. So, uh, but this is a way to play and then not worry. Uh, you got your fix from Rio, right? You can get that. Yep. Rio has everything, Diane. I think that's a great place to go. Um, Lori, the pumice, I don't know. I think pumice is probably metal supplier. What do you think, Robert? Also? Yeah, uh, Rio has it. Contenti has it. Auto Fry has it. It's a real standard. It's not fancy stuff. It's any, any jewelry supply will have it. Do it some comes people, in a little bag. Yeah. Am I crazy or do some people use like a kitty litter thing? Maybe that's something else. Kitty yeah, litter. you can use, uh, well, you can use vermiculite, although that will burn eventually okay. and it will uh, start to ash up. Okay. I think I've used that in the past. A local yeah. store, Lori, I don't know a local store that would sell that if that's in a hardware store or not. I don't think it is. No. Um, On this? No. Uh, oh, Katie, thanks. Handy flux. Yeah, that's one of the fluxes I use for sure. Yeah. Uh, Just to paste, yeah. Yeah. Have I done rings with the scraps? No, but that's a great idea, Rita. Do one. 
I mean, it's just, it's easy and fun. And you can see on the main one on the screen right now, I just hammered the heck out of the back of that cuff before I started. I just made holes and things and all that kind of stuff. But all that scrap on there is totally solid. Uh, and I have filed it, so nothing is um, sharp. So I think that's important. Marilyn wants to know, can you use perlite? I have no idea, Robert, do you know? You can use perlite, but again, that's um, that will ash up after a while. Okay. I use something. I use something called Black Beauty, that you can get at some um, masonry places. It's blasting sand for concrete. Okay. And it's very fine black, and um, I, I use that in my tray. The truth is, you can also use. I think I show it in the class that I teach. You can also use um, your third arm and just hold it like on a charcoal block or a non-asbestos pad too. You can do it those ways. I show you that actually or in that fire class. And brick. Yeah, exactly. So fire brick. That's fire brick. All those ways with third arms. Um, that's in the class as well. Uh, the metal is the base piece of the bracelet. It's it was fine silver again. I had it left over, so I cut pieces. Um, you could do sterling for sure, but that would be a lot more to heat. You'd, you'd need a lot of heat to get things to stick more on that. The 22 gauge um, was what it started, was perfect. Worked as a cuff, worked for soldering everything on without melting. Uh, so that's what I suggest, what I did here. But again, this is rogue soldering. Just try whatever you want. I just wanted to show you that it's worth trying. You can make something fun. So... There we go. We did it, Robert. Another fun at one. Oh, you're you're just the most wonderful person. I just love doing this. Oh, thanks. I love but you guys give coming us, on. Give everybody for free is really fantastic. Oh, it's worth it, please. And we're going to do, we're so excited. We talked Robert into doing resin. I can hardly wait because I know it's going to be good. I love resin. Uh, go to his site, fobone.com. Get the handout. I know people had sound problems in the beginning, not to worry. The... Um, You'll get an email that'll tell you how to get the recording. That's the easiest way to do it because your name will be on. Yeah, I'll have all your email addresses and you'll get the information. And then it'll say um, purchase, but you're purchasing for zero. So you just put it in your cart and buy it. You won't be charged. You don't get asked any credit card information or any of that. And then it'll be in there. And um, uh, fire scale. I didn't have any problems, Anita, with that on this. I cleaned off everything. So, uh, oh, wait, let me and put in there. Silver. Go ahead, Robert. What'd you say? And it's fine silver. Right. Exactly. Of course. So you don't get the same fire scale. But probably it could be cool, the fire scale, if you were using sterling. Because you know what? There were some pieces in there because that was just a box of junk. I mean, nice junk silver. Um, there's Robert's site for everyone asking. Uh, so I didn't know what I was using. So something's got some fire scale on it. I just cleaned it off or filed it off. You know, it was just fun. No worries. So, all right, everyone, I will send you an email. I send you all a big hug and I just want everyone to be well and we'll meet again. We have so many cool classes coming up at craftcast.com. Um, we're announcing them because it's been crazy in the world. You know, we're sort of putting up new live classes every week as we have everyone's materials ready. I will um, keep this uh, fun at one going as long as possible because I know it's great fun for us to all to get together and chat. So again, thank you for all your support, for supporting the artists, buying their supplies, buying their classes. Big hug and a kiss to everyone, and especially to you, may Mr. Danzig. Thank you. May I make one more announcement? Yes. Um, if you are ordering, if you are ordering concrete, my supplier is a little bit back ordered, so I'm a little bit back ordered. Okay. If you do order some, I promise it will get out as soon as I get it, which should, should be within about a week. Um, there you go. I might have it before that, but if it takes a little bit, I promise I'll get it out. There you go. There you go. We're all doing thank whatever you. we can. So thank, thank you, you, darling. Again. I'll talk to you soon yeah. and we'll plan our next well, our next meeting online, but we'll have resin to talk I about. I look forward to it. Okay, honey. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. They will. You too, hon. All right. Bye-bye.